God loves you. How many times have you heard Jesus loves you? Today, I am concerned what people say about me is the day I hang my megaphone up. Heaven or hell when you die, believe in Jesus Christ. Stop playing games with God. You've been playing games with God way. Welcome, Saints. Welcome to Los Angeles. Uh, God bless you. I hope you had a blessed day. Uh, you know, you do still have your fingers and toes, and uh, we're not living in some uh, Islamic country where they're chopping off your head. I think you're doing pretty good as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to share a little bit about some news. Uh, God is into politics. If you think God's not into politics, I encourage you to cut out first and second kings from your Bible. Virginia just won. Virginia uh, took some Republicans and won. They elected a, a governor Republican. He beat a Democrat. That's that's a punch to Biden. And not only that, but um, we also had a gal, uh, Winsome Sears, a Republican. She won lieutenant governor. And for those of you Democrats that call us a bunch of racist, she's a black female. How are you going to handle that? And she's a Republican. So uh, praise God uh, for Virginia. Now, you know, I'm not going to take any credit. I'm not going to say we were any influence. But uh, the last SOPA conference we had was in the state of Virginia. Uh, not that we, uh, you know, influenced anybody, but, uh, you know, what a coincidence that uh, we were in that state preaching about, uh, you know, hey, three, four weeks ago. And uh, look at what happened. So uh, if you left, the, if you live in a liberal state, you might want to have a SOPA conference. And uh, like Jesus that went into the temple, maybe we can clean house and put some Republicans in there. So uh, this is a good thing. For those of you that believe uh, the apocalypse is at hand, hey, let me tell you, God always sends us a little bit more time. What a loving God we have. Now, for those of you who love to wear the tinfoil hat, you uh, live in the world of conspiracy. I hate to burst your bubble. Hundreds, hundreds of conspiracy followers gathered at AT&T Discovery Channel in Dallas. And you know why they were there? They were there because they believed Donald Trump and John F. Kennedy Jr. were going to appear on Tuesday and make a run for office. This is what the wackos with the aluminum foil hat believed. They do not believe that John F. Kennedy Jr. died in a plane crash 1999. It's all a big government conspiracy. They believe he waited for this date on Tuesday to show up, and he and Trump were going to run for office. Trump was going to be the president. He was going to be the VP. This is what these guys believe. They believe on Tuesday they would make an appearance and it would happen at the famous Grassy Knoll. 
That, of course, is in Dallas, where Kennedy was shot, assassinated. And, of course, uh, they didn't believe that to happen as well. It's a government conspiracy. It all happened in 1963, and the government uh, uh, just is lying to you. Well, I hate to bust your bubble, but today is Wednesday. A Trump didn't appear. A Kennedy Jr. didn't appear. And so uh, your hope in these things is wrong. If you're going to have hope in something, have it in Jesus Christ. Kennedy is burning in hell. He was a Catholic. Mary's not going to take him out of purgatory. You don't pray to Mary, put ashes on your forehead, confess your sins to a priest, and keep the traditions of the church and go to heaven. You are wrong. Kennedy, like all the other Kennedys, are burning in hell. As a matter of fact, that family has a curse. It's been dying among themselves like you wouldn't believe. But, you know, the conspiracy people, this is a hard one for them to swallow. I read a couple of news articles where a couple of trucks came by. Big black trucks, tinted windows. And the crowd hushed because they were expecting the door to open. It was probably some guy that just drove by. What a joke. And you guys maybe mock us because we have hope in Jesus Christ and his return. Well, I hate to bust your bubble. It didn't happen. Another conspiracy proven wrong. You may not go that far. Some of these people showed up Monday in the rain. That's how much they believe this stuff. Are they going to believe that they were lied to? I doubt it. They'll probably give another bogus date. But uh, it's amazing what's in the news these days. And, of course, as most of you know, Alex Baldwin killed somebody. On set, he pulled the trigger and he killed somebody. Now, we preach to this guy in Hollywood. He's a leftist, liberal. I would even consider him an atheist. He despises God so much and some of the things he said to us. This guy does hate God. But what I like to bring up isn't the fact that he shot somebody. I'd like to bring up the last words that were said on that stage when he thought he had a blank gun and it was a real weapon and he shot somebody. This is the actual words. Last words. Alex Baldwin prepared for the scene and reported, reportedly said, so I guess I'm going to take this shot, this out and pull the trigger, bang. That's what he said prior to pulling the trigger. A live bullet flew out of that weapon that Baldwin was holding. And, of course, it hit the female. She died. She stumbled backwards into the arms of an electrician. The boom operator shouts, Oh, that was no good. To which the woman who was shot said, No, that was no good. That was no good at all. Those were her last words. For those of you who believe on your deathbed, you're going to repent. You're fooled to believe that. There was no, oh, Jesus, forgive me. Oh, Lord, come into my life. Oh, I regret my sin. What she said was, no, that was not good. There was no good at all. And, of course, she fell to the ground and died. Last words, people. What are going to be your last words when you die? We know what Stephen said when he was stoned to death. You might live in a scenario where you don't have the time. Okay, I've been in a car that got hit on the side that rolled over three times. Now, you may know somebody that died in an accident and said, yes, Brother Reuben, but they, they cried out to God. They're saved. They're in the arms of Jesus. I say, what a life in a pit of hell. 
I rolled over in that car and don't remember saying anything about Jesus. When we landed, hey, the car was absolutely destroyed. Somebody pried me out of the car, and I thank God I was alive. But when you're rolling there, you're not crying out to Jesus. What a lie from the pit of hell. So I hate to burst your bubble, but if you had a loved one that died in an accident, and you're comforted by maybe somebody who said he's in the arms of Jesus, that's a lie. That's the last thing you do. And as per what happened at this movie set, that's uh, really been uh, pretty big news. Uh, there was no Jesus, forgive me, before she took her last breath. So uh, you don't know when you're going to die. The concept is like what uh, Amos said, Amos 4.12, prepare to meet thy God. You need to prepare to meet God, just like you prepared for the day. You brushed your teeth, I hope, took a shower, I hope, put some clothes on, unless you live in San Francisco. You prepared for the day. That's the concept, people. Are you prepared to meet God? Are you ready to meet God? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If Jesus Christ is truly in your heart, that comes out of your mouth, not Oh, yes, this one really hurts. We got a, a guest today that I think is going to um, encourage many of you. I know there's a handful of you. I shouldn't say handful. I should say I know there's a number of you who preach by yourself. Who go to a place, a sidewalk, you hold the banner, you have a megaphone, and you preach by yourself. Well, I'm going to introduce this young brother, 18 years old, Dario, and he's from Sweden. And Sweden isn't very popular with what he's doing. As a matter of fact, he's going to give some testimonies and how his latest arrest, what happened, what did he say that caused an arrest? He doesn't have attorneys like you and I. He doesn't have a lot of free speech like we have in America. And yet this young man at this early age is getting on the street and he's preaching. And I've talked to him numerous times on Facebook. You know, he has questions. What do I do? And uh, you'll hear firsthand what's going on in that country. And they're not very uh, tolerant of Christianity. Okay, you can watch our videos here in America. And even uh, in, in Los Angeles, if you live in America, and you may see the police around us, you may see that we have free attorneys that we use to keep free speech in this country. We didn't have that. Back when I was his age, we came and we preached in Los Angeles and we were shut down numerous times. We didn't have free speech attorneys. We didn't know who to turn to. We actually hired an attorney. We paid him a hundred bucks an hour. That was in the early eighties. He was a Mooney. That's what his religion was. He was a Mooney. And when LAPD would walk up to us and say, we're breaking the law, we would tell them, officer, I think you need to talk to my attorney. Counselor, can you please handle this? And uh, all of a sudden things changed. But, you know, hey, we were young guys, 18, 19 years old. We weren't rolling in money. We can only afford this guy for two and a half hours, maybe. We put our money together. So what you see when you see these videos, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears behind it. It just didn't happen. I don't get favor in these cities we go to because I'm a nice guy. It's because we sued. We change laws. We have a reputation. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and what you do. And do you just preach God loves you? <laughs> well, let me first say that I give glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that he indeed is Lord. Well, all things started around two years ago when 
you know, I was a lukewarm Christian. I thought I love Jesus and I thought Jesus loves me. Oh, he is full of grace. He is full of mercy. He loves you. No, he can send you to hell. How can a loving God send you in hell? And, you know, things started to go and go and go so far that one day, actually, I found a, a street preacher like you and other brothers that are preaching on the streets. And those brothers are starting to quote the Bible. I said, what? Is Jesus really saying this stuff? Matthew 7, the narrow road and things like that. Things like that. I said, I'm not living this holy life that I'm expected to do. I will not make it to heaven. So one day, actually, I bowed my knees. I invited Christ. And you know, this is not like a sinner's prayer. It's not like a formula you have in the Bible. Say this prayer and focus, focus, you are saved. That's right. This is not the magic. This is serious. This is about repenting, changing your mind, hating unholiness and sin. Like people may say I'm a homophobic. No, I'm not afraid of homos, but I'm allergic. It, you know, I'm allergic about sin. I can't stand it. It's so I love God so much that we need to hate the sin. Anyways, uh, four months ago, after I got saved, four or five months ago, when I really truly repented of my sins, no watching porn, no, 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 no doing this filth, these disgusting things that God actually hates. God is angry, angry. The wicked every day is really angry. A holy anger is a holy God. We need to stand to his standards, not to my standards. Who am I? The Bible didn't come to so that I would change the Bible, I would change God. The Bible came so that the Bible, the word of God, should change me. So then I started to receive the changing. It started to change me from my heart. Friends, old friends that I used to have. I don't have them anymore. And I, when, I, when I tell you I don't have them anymore, I mean that I don't have them anymore. Wow. So maybe five months ago, uh, five months after my salvation, I was so desperate, so desperate to go out and preach the gospel. That's how I know this is my calling. I mean, you don't get desperate and a, a fire inside of you to go and preach the gospel four or five months after you get saved. I haven't even read the Bible yet. I'm not so, really, I haven't even read the Bible. I haven't come to Acts. And I think I read the Gospels, but not, not the Book of Acts. But I started to have this fire inside of my, my body. If God can change me, a filthy sinner, disgusting, I was only 16. And my, you know, people, people like to say, oh, you are too young, you know, the age, live your life. I said, you know, that, that gives me a headache. That really gives me a headache. You're too young. You have time. You need to live your life, blah, blah, blah. That's terrible. Lie from the hell. It's not excuse that I'm 16. It's not excuse that you're 80 years old. No excuse. If you want to get right to God, you will get right to God. Anyways. So then I started to type in on YouTube, preachers in Gothenburg. I was so desperate. I was searching of the people, preachers. I said, in like, somebody needs to go out and preach in Sweden. I can't find them, I can see them, but probably somebody's going out. So I searched on YouTube, preachers on uh, in Gothenburg or something like that. So this brother's face actually popped out on the screen and I see him preaching. Like, I was starting to shake. I saw him preaching with fire. I like shaking, wow, hallelujah. I need to be on the streets. I need to be to meet my uh, like family, you know, and we should have a good time, chit chat and eat food. And this guy is writing me at that time, at that spot, bro, I'm in Gothenburg. If you want, come. I left everything, family, food. I was jumping my seat, taking my shoes, taking my Bible and walking straight out to the city. So this, so then I go to the city and, you know, we have a big, big, big mall, like a beautiful big mall of thousands and thousands of people every day. So, and I, you know, I was thinking that we would preach on a mic, you know, this is like comfy things, 
you know, I never preached before. So I think one step at a time, take a mic, read the Bible, pray. No, no, no. It wasn't like that. I was uh, meeting him up in the mall. He just said, hey, hey, hug me. Nothing else. Didn't explain anything because he thought that I was a street preacher. He didn't knew that I was, I got just saved and have read the Bible. So then he's standing in the middle of the mall shouting about Jesus. And then after maybe one hour, he looks at me and said, Daddy, you want to you wanna go now? You know, my heart rate was 200. I was so nervous. But then I said something. I said, God, I was just standing. I said, God, if you call me to do this, I need your help. Like, I, I can't do it with my own power. I haven't read the Bible. I am not, not so knowledgeable. Please help me. You see the fire I have for you. You see the passion. You see the fire. You see the, the love that I really feel for you, holy God. Wonderful Jesus. You know, and, and the enemy started to attack me. Maybe your friends will walk out and they don't know you are safe. People will think you're crazy. So I stand in the middle of the mall thousands and thousands and thousands of people have read my Bible, just got saved, just repented and shouted, hallelujah, Jesus. And that's what the beginning of my calling of street preachers. So my point is, if I could stand in the middle of the mall, preaching with my own voice, haven't read the Bible, haven't ju just repented, people are without excuse, really no excuse you can't say i am no i have not so much experience you can't say i haven't read my bible you can't say i'm not praying there's only excuses jesus don't call you to be a, a a person that only excuses things he doesn't call you to to be afraid scared ashamed no are you joking he's calling you to be a preacher a man of god that will stand for the truth, for the holiness. That's the beauty of Christianity, to, like to follow Jesus, to stand on his word. So that was, yeah, how I began yeah, to brother, preach. You know, uh, not that tracks are bad, but tracks when you hand to somebody, uh, sometimes they say, no, thank you. That's the genius of God putting preaching on the Bible. Because they can't say, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> they can't say, no, I don't want to hear that. As a matter of fact, if you know anything about court cases, if an attorney wants to persuade the jury on something, he's going to say something, and the judge will say, stop that, and then he'll turn to the jury and say, discard everything that you just heard. They can't. <laughs> the attorney knows it. It's in their ears. They already heard. Yeah. So that's the genius of God. And uh, why give anybody the option to say no thank you? I mean, you got the best news in town. Uh, so why should you give them, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't want to give it to you. Forget that. <laughs> Put it in their ears. They yeah. need to hear. You have many verses. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Not only do you have verses, but you have examples of men of God who preached out loud. You got story after story. I mean, Jesus Christ fed a multitude of 3,000, men only, not counting women and children. Yeah. And he taught them. What did he do? Whisper? <laughs> no, he must have had a very authoritative voice to reach 3,000 men, not including women and children, and having them hear. So, uh, you know, you may, you may want to um, upgrade uh, your evangelism and don't let people just walk by saying, no, thank you, I don't want that. Uh, yeah. Put it in their ears. Uh, according to Ezekiel 3 and 33, blood is now on them. They know. They've been told, which is uh, why the genius of preaching. They can't say, I didn't know. Now, brother, you um, you guys uh, preach uh, events too, didn't you? Did you get in trouble for going to a homosexual parade? And is it illegal in Sweden to even speak against homosexuality now? 
Uh, yes, it is. I mean, if you like, there were maybe some months ago they were trying to put a law that if I even spoke about them, I could get uh, pay some money, like tickets and something like that. I don't know how it is with that law, but they was they were talking about it in the, you know, in the in the parliament. Being evil, loving, sin praising event. That's terrible. So when I saw the kids and the, and the parents, you know, it, it started to bubble inside of me. So then we started to preach really, really, really hard. I mean, when I preach, I don't preach. God loves you. When I'm when I'm on those events, no, 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 no. I said God is angry with you. Is if you don't want, Christians can't hear this, or they can't even imagine that I go out and tell people God is really angry at your wicked, wicked, wicked ways. You know, when they, and when I hear my preaching on YouTube, how can you say that? Do you not know the gospel? God is love. God is love. You know, that thing destroys my brain. I can't listen to that, really. It's so ignorant that, that I can listen. So we went out preaching. We had banners and we preached in hours, really rebuking whole the parade, walking back and forth. And you know, the police was mashing, mashing with them. The firefighters were walking in the parades. Really, the whole society is in sin. They're supporting sin. So in the end of the preaching, guess what? We, the street preachers, we stand there like after the preaching and the chief, the chief officer come, walks up to us and, and he said, and this is the funny part, listen up. This is a lot where it really gets that I am attacked in this country. So we are preachers are standing here and the chief, the police chief are coming, walking up to us and said, okay, 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 guys, stop, 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 stop. You had your message. The parade is over. You did a good job. We, we allowed you to preach. And everybody said, oh, you know, they were actually shielding us. Police officers shielding us. And we said, oh, thank you, police officer. God bless you. May God protect you. And, it's, and then he said, but wait, wait. I, 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 I have a name. Then he checked his radio. Is somebody here named Dario? Dario? Who is Dario? So everybody started to laugh because I'm in trouble all the time with the police. So they picked me up in a van. And they said they set up a court time for me. They want to charge me really bad for that because I spoke. And you know, it was undercover officers taking picture of us, listening. Really, nobody saw them. They were like taking picture with their hand. And uh, you can imagine what I, what I said on that parade. And they all heard it. I was so happy that they heard it. Hallelujah, praise to God. But... Uh, now I need to go to court. Anyway, and uh, I, I got actually tickets and paper home and all this kind of stuff. I was just rejoicing. Hallelujah. One ticket, it means I've, I've done a good job in this country. Amen. But now, well now, but you know, in the end, it gets a lot of money. I don't work. Like now I have a Easter break. No, how you call it? Yeah, Easter break in Sweden. So now I can work for only one week. But when you take expensive and I go out and I need to pay these tickets, otherwise they will put me on a bad scale. You know, it, it's harsh when you are alone, but I'm not alone. I have a lot of support. I have my God that is everlasting, all powerful behind me. So, and then they picked me in the van and the police officers, he had a hearing with me. So, and I was just, in the van, I was just laughing, dying of laugh. His argument was so bad. Like I said, excuse me, police officers, officers, are you hearing what you're saying to me? Like, really, I'm not joking. I said that you're intellectual, you have a brain, you can think, you know, it's right or wrong. Do you hear yourself? I was really curious. Do you actually hear what you're saying? Is, it, is this of purpose? Or are you just ignorant? Because if, if you're ignorant, that's maybe good. But if you if this is on purpose, then something is really, really wrong. So anyway, they set up a court case for me. 
and uh, yeah, we are here now. And also, we had a Halloween event. This is not even Halloween; it's Demon Vin. I call it Demon Vin. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. So I was out preaching, and you know, I saw parents, parents like kids walking like little demons. I said to the spirit, I, you should be so ashamed, so ashamed. You take your kid away from my preaching, but you give him a clothing that represented Satan and darkness. You should be so ashamed, so ashamed. And uh, the same night, uh, you know, people were drinking, they were coming at me, against me, punching, cursing, you know. And then the police came instead of taking care of the crowd, a bunch of people, you know, real hate, darkness. I was in, in the midst of the darkness. Instead of the police officers taking away them, guess who they arrested? Me. So we live in a... I love this country. I, I really love this country. I'm not, I'm not joking. It's a beautiful place, but it's satanic. It's terrible. It's... Like here in Sweden, most of the people are atheists. Most of the population are atheists. Don't don't believe in God, and those who believe in God in in, in the Swedish Church, those ideas is so beneath the law. It's so terrible. I have rebuked so many churches and got arrested so many times. Every time I go to a church, they yeah try. A police came in, arrest me, and uh, yeah. Amen, brother. And I tell you, um, I wish I could say there's going to be an end to that, but uh, unfortunately, there's not. Uh, in my short life, uh, 40 years of service, I forget how many times I've been arrested and cited. You lose count after a while. But your reputation is there because you actually have fought in court. It's there. Uh, you know, you may not see things now, but uh, down the road, you'll be able to see the work that you're doing. You might be able to change laws in that country. Um, you know, President Trump was um, was going to try to be fired. They wanted to get rid of this guy. They said that he started a riot with words that he used. And they tried to impeach President Trump. You know, President Trump's attorneys used our court case to get him off for free speech? Hey, when we were going to court over that ordeal, we never thought anything remotely close to that. And so, you know, this is not boasting, brother. This is just simply saying it takes somebody willing to get arrested, to go to jail, to be a nuisance uh, uh, in some of these um, uh, uh, countries. I've been arrested for disturbing the peace. Uh, a yeah. nuisance, public nuisance. Uh, they said I was drunk in public. Uh, you know, they said I was loitering. You know, just ludicrous things. All the times I've ever been arrested, really never been charged with anything. By the time it gets to court, I've argued my case. Now I have attorneys. And so they pretty much just drop it. I don't know what the laws are in Sweden, brother, but I could, I could challenge you that when you're there, Turn it into the Bible. What I said to those homosexuals is what the Bible says. So is this court to assume that God is on trial? Is this court telling me that the Bible is on trial? I'm only quoting what the Bible says. Do you have issues with the Bible? And if you make that an issue, they'd have to handle it a little bit differently. But uh, uh, amen, brother, there, you're, you're going to be arrested. You're going to be jailed. Uh, you know, you mentioned losing friends. Uh, your name is going to be slandered among, among the Christians out there. Uh, I would rather family and friends and Christians leave you than you leaving them. We're always trying to tell people, don't leave your family. Don't leave your friends. Still work with them. Yeah. But I would rather them leave you like what's going on with you. They see you. Hey, they consider somebody that's crazy. No, you just believe the Bible and you're proclaiming it and you're paying the price for it. 
you know, uh, being arrested is very biblical. Most of our epistles was written from a jail cell. Amen. And uh, that's what many believers don't, uh, don't understand. When the Bible says, remember those in bonds, he's not talking about go hug a homo. He's not talking about go, go hug a child molester, uh, uh, go to prison and hold hands with a, uh, with a rapist. No, he's referring to believers who are sitting in the cell right now. And even though it's 2021, it even happens. You might look at Sweden and say, well, you know, they're a socialist country. Yeah, but if we if we don't use them as an example, it can happen here. It can happen here. And living in America, for those of you that do, let me remind you, the fine print of living in this country, the Bible says too much is given, much is required. You have the freedom to stand on that sidewalk. You have the freedom to go into any church you want. You have the freedom to read your Bible, to tell a homosexual has, he's an abomination. That's what God says. If you're going to preach to homosexuals, tell them what God says. They're an abomination, Old Testament, reprobate, New Testament. This weekend, there'll be about 16, 17 of us going over to Phoenix. And uh, they have their sodomite parade. Uh, normally, it's in April, but because of the virus, they postponed it, and now it's going to be this weekend. Okay, we've got a lot of detectives that we're working with. As a matter of fact, anytime I get to Phoenix, they ask me to please call them so they can send officers around us. They know when we get there, we have an agenda. We don't just get there, well, Lord, what would you have me to do? No, we have an agenda. The Bible says, without a vision, my people perish. And if we don't have a purpose, a game plan, and a vision, you're just going to wonder, am I really useful holding this sign? Uh, you'll perish. And so, uh, you know, there's going to be things that we're going to do. We're going to be preaching outside of a mosque. We're going to be going to a university. Uh, we're going to be going to some churches out there. Uh, I've got the, the schedule that I, you know, submitted to the Phoenix police, and they'll be there. Because they know when we show up, there's going to be tons of complaints. So they want to be there and tell people it's within his rights he can do that. There's nothing we can do. But it took some time to do this. I can't tell you how many years we've been going to this uh, to this event. And we get to preach what God says. Unlike in Sweden. Boy, you address them as wicked. Uh, you're going to jail. Now, I'm sure if he would have went there and said, Jesus loves you no matter what you did, uh, you know, he wouldn't have even got a citation. But he's an ambassador for God, as we should. And as ambassadors, we need to represent our king exactly with what our king says. And we're just using uh, homosexuals. Uh, you know, they've got a banner. We can't get the pictures up. But uh, they got a banner like or the ones that we use with the laundry list of sin. We're dealing with a lot of sin. It's not just homosexuals. But, uh, you know, the reason why we have to deal with the homosexuals is because, um, you know, they've got a pride parade. If there was a fornication pride parade, we'd be out there. If there was an adultery pride parade, we'd be out there. But the Bible says God hates a proud look. If God hates a proud look, how much more is God going to hate a pride parade? So when I go to uh, uh, Phoenix, I'm not going to say uh, God loves you. They know this. According to Romans 1, most of them all grew up in some type of religion. They, they understand. They just haven't heard the word repentance. And they try to justify and break up the Bible. So, uh, brother, we thank you for that. Now, listen, um, um, you've got a Muslim who had some uh, weird beliefs. And now he's working with you. Can you please elaborate on that for the viewers? Yeah, I mean, if you check the channel, I mean, this brother, actually, I need to tell you uh, something about him that police said. This is so funny. He's from Afghanistan. 
blessed, anointed brother. He's really anointed in the scripture, in, in the preaching, really anointed. He's, I'm inspired of him. So when I, when I was on the demon weed, actually when I was in the car, the police said, oh, people were saying that you're racist and homophobic. <laughs> so I was going to laugh in the car. I said, hold on a second. First of all, I'm an immigrant to this country. How can I be racist? Secondly, my inspiration in this country is an Afghan Christian. Are you joking with me, police officer? You, and they were, or there's, you know what they say? Oh, but Victor said that you're racist, but people said it. You know how they change their mind is is I, I put them on place. You know, it's it's terrible. Anyways, about this uh, brother. Yeah, he was actually a, a extremist. He was one. He was hating the Jews and hating the Christians, and he wanted to do jihad in uh, in, in Syria. He wow. was going to do the war, but he said, "By the grace of God." I mean, you can check the whole testimony in our channel. It's in the first page. Uh, it's a beautiful testimony. And then he said, "By the grace of God, I couldn't make it there, so I moved to Sweden," and. His jihad, he wanted to learn the Bible in the churches and use the Bible against uh, the followers of Christ so that they can, could convert to Islam. But in that process, he met Jesus. He found Jesus. And this brother is not a lukewarm Christian. I can tell you that he said, he, he talks to me like that brother, really, I hope and wish that the Lord takes me because I just want to meet him. I'm ready to die for my Lord. His passion for Christ and the beliefs. And when he, he was preaching on, on a pride parade, oh, wow, that preaching. We made a, a special video just about his preaching. It was so anointed, so anointed, this brother, with so much love for Jesus. But anyways, he tried to use the Bible against Christians and he become a Christian. That it's like a long, long process. And one day he had a dream. He had a dream where actually he's, Jesus tell him, God tells him, David, you don't need to die for me because I already died for you. Wow. So he, he had a price. He had had a dream. He was trying to go jihad, and he, he like he talked some something about an ocean. He couldn't find everything, and then this dream came. He said, "David, hold on, you didn't don't need to die for me, David. I only died for you. Just follow me." So after this dream, this guy really got on fire. It was like because God God can see our hearts, you know. In the in the New Testament, Jesus somehow could see what people. And know what people are thinking and feeling and oh why did you say this oh and then he explained but this brother have a pure heart he really loves the lord and i'm so blessed that i have those kind of people around me that can support and blessing but he's he's a blessing he's wow no words actually what a blessing and god you know hey he doesn't give up on islam uh, we're going to be standing in front of a mosque when we get to Arizona. We always do. And uh, my hope is that they will repent, not just to holler at them. My hope is to introduce them to Jesus as the Son of God. Most of them will tell you we believe that Jesus is a prophet. Well, you know, they reject the fact that he's the Son of God. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you need to go and understand you need to expose the sin, the problem, before you can give the remedy, Jesus Christ. If you just preach Jesus, most of them would just walk away saying, I believe. But you need to expose the problem. That's where you're going to get in trouble with courts. That's where you're going to get in trouble with police. That's where you're going to get in trouble with cities. Uh, you know, and so it's uh, it. Uh, what a blessing, brother, for you to, at a young age, 18 years old, this guy's out there preaching, and, um, you know, I've, I've talked to him a, a number of times on Facebook, and, uh, you know, he's asking me, what do I do? I, you know, should I get arrested? They're going to need, they threaten to arrest me. Yeah, get out there and go preach. And he does. 
uh, you know, it's it's a it's a blessing that he's willing to do this. And sometimes he'll even do it by himself uh, to get arrested. It, it appears he already has a name even among the police where they want to teach you a lesson. A little bit like Arthur over in Canada. You know, it's amazing. Uh, you know, you're going to be a, a nuisance to the city. If you've ever driven a car, you'll notice on the dashboard, if you don't check your oil, a light goes on and a very annoying buzzard happens. That sound is extremely annoying for a reason. The manufacturer of the vehicle wants to get your attention to look at the dashboard to tell you and warn you your oil is low. If you don't put oil, your engine is going to blow up. So there's a reason why you might be considered, uh, uh, you know, obnoxious or loud. We're kind of like, street preachers are kind of like that buzzing light on your dashboard that is very annoying, but it gets the driver to look and pay attention and listen. And if the driver don't do anything, that's he's going to need a whole new engine. <laughs> There's reason. There's madness. You know, God's not an unreasonable God. There's there's purpose as to why God has us do things. Like I said, a track you can always say no to. Uh, but, uh, you know, once you hear it in the ears, uh, that's about it. And my testimony is very simple. This is not my calling. This is not my ministry. This is not my gift. What I've been doing for over four decades is my duty in Christ. That's all. Just my simple duty. Jesus said, if you would, if you confess him, he's going to confess you. That sure sounds like a condition to me. And that was said to his disciples. That was said to guys who gave everything up. Matthew chapter 10. Then he goes on to say, if you deny me, likewise, I will deny you before the Father and the holy angels. So if you want to deny God, if you think that going to church is Christianity, buddy, you're in the wrong boat. You need to get saved. You need to go out and proclaim. You need to tell people about hellfire because Jesus spoke more on that subject than grace, love, and mercy combined. That's the Jesus Christ of the Bible. And uh, what a blessing to hear this young man who's willing to lose his friends, to have uh, nobody hang with him because he's going to be considered an outcast and a lunatic. And um, he's willing to do it for your soul, for you. Uh, you know, on Judgment Day, then we'll see the reason why God had him do that. And God wants more. Remember, it took a John the Baptist to usher in Jesus Christ. For those of you that are cl claiming that Jesus is coming back, it's going to take a few more John the Baptists on the street now because crowds a little bit thicker, uh, multitudes a little bit bigger. And so uh, we need people like this to go out. If you feel that maybe a God is leading you to go do this, just go do it. You know, I can't give you a, a certified letter. Uh, you know, don't expect an angel to come and appear to you. Why should Jesus Christ come all the way from the right hand of the Father to remind you when it's in our Bible? Verses and examples of men of God preaching outdoors with their voice. Now, brother, uh, you know, we're going to have some people that uh, will assume that, you know, what you're doing is just wasting time. Uh, and uh, maybe you got some people here in America that don't think that they want to do this. Can you please tell us, living in a country like Switzerland, what can happen here in America if we don't preserve what God says? Mm. I mean, I can say that I wish that I had the same laws and 
constitution like you guys have like is a privilege from god really is it's a privilege that you can that today in this in these days you can have laws that protect street preachers on the streets it's a blessing it, it like for me that lives in sweden i can't even imagine that the people say we live in a in a country that accepts and free speech it's not like it, it's a bunch of lies if you accept my message in the bible don't arrest me don't give me tickets protect me don't see me as the problem but the sinners and the angry crowd like in the day of noah don't see me i'm not the problem i'm just leading people to the ark those people are the problem they are hating the ark and they are hating the preacher and the word of god don't have don't they don't have respect for themselves they don't have respect for god so i encourage encourage you really i mean this is not a joke people think when i'm go preaching it's my hobby and i'm just playing around it's funny thing to do i love to preach but that's not why i'm preaching because i love it i preach because i follow christ it's a command Mark 16 verse 15 go out and preach the gospel to all the nations it's a command it's not just preach if you want maybe you can think about maybe you should see a angel first maybe you should go to revelation maybe this is your calling no it's a command from jesus call yourself unworthy servant i've only done my part and praise to god i'm only calling myself a unworthy servant doesn't matter if i'm i'm living in a country that hates street preachers like like one fourth of this country one fourth of the population of this country have mental health issue one fourth and we have clean water we have roof over our heads we have a nice and and, and soft bed that's not the problem we don't have christ this country is spiritually spiritually dead and, and that's why the laws are like this i have no rights but you that lives in a country much freer country i really encourage you this is not a game this is not a joke go and street preach go and spread the light of christ because i mean you, you know thing in life there's only one thing that we will regret really i think that i thought about this one thing that's like let me tell you quickly as a, a movie it's the in the world war 2 and a man was selling he was a rich 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 man this man was selling his stuff to save the jews like to save people and in the end of the movie it was like maybe 100 people and he sold his car he sold his house all the things he had he sold it and he was looking at the crowd and this man was bowing his knees and started to cry to weep scream like crying you know why because he saw his watch he saw his clothes he said i could save two or three people with my watch with my clothes with my shoes the only thing you regret in life that you didn't preach to your family members that you didn't even preach for the for your class for your job for your uh, for the, for the people around you that's the only thing you will regret in life and and like this is, this is not a joke i mean if god commands us to preach the gospel and we don't do it if we know the light of the truth jesus is the, the the light of the world and we don't spread the light we don't shine with the light because we are ashamed and scared bad 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 i'm not here to scare you but that's really really bad if you don't want to preach because you're ashamed or scared or not encouraged enough be encouraged you have the bible you have preachers you have a free country be encouraged find a way don't 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 have excuses because people are dying and going to hell everlasting punishment everlasting fire the homosexuals are burning people committing abortion are burning people committing adultery are burning porn watching are burning liability they are burning my friends have you sometimes burned yourself with a finger it's a fire it's 
it's it's gnashing of teeth it's not a joke it's not a game so be the light like jesus commands you to to be be his word be his ambassador be his face out for this world for this wicked world and you should be proud it's not, it's not like boasting i'm so proud to stand for holy god when we compare my side and the sinner side i am so proud and so glad and so blessed that i'm without like i'm not i'm totally changed born again christian hallelujah and they can see the happiness and the smile because when they are angry i am smiling when they are hating i'm rejoicing to my lord and savior when they are arresting me in the cell i'm singing in the cell one time i was in jail you know what should they spend so many hours what, what should they do in the, in the jail i mean you know no food no don't give you nothing so in the jail i said to sing and that's why it's good to sing songs about god not worldly songs not songs of this world you should not listen to that don't listen to songs of the world listen to songs that we praise god anyways so i was in the cell and i was singing in hours and it was so good to sing you know four walls so you could hear your voice really good so i was singing and singing and singing and then the god came I said what are you doing uh, i'm singing and then i asked the god can you uh, excuse me can people hear me outside they say bro you're so loud everybody can hear you perfect i'm going to continue god bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so god bless you. and continue to sing like praising songs to god so you know I mean, really, I'm 18, not, nothing special. I'm nothing special, but I have found encouragement and found fire in my soul, in my heart for Christ. And I encourage you in a free country, if you are if, if you are doubting, thinking, no, rebuke those thoughts, rebuke those doubts, and said, I'm going to go out, even if it takes my life, if it takes me to jail, and I am going to pledge allegiance to the Lamb of God because I have the rights and I have the possibilities in this free country. I don't have the possibilities. I have tickets. I'm young. I don't work. I have money to pay. I have not the possibilities. Is that an excuse? Did John have an excuse? Did Paul have an excuse? Did, did Peter have an excuse when he preached? No. No, 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 no. They went out and they gave their life for the sake of Christ. And I encourage you to do the same. Stop with the excuse and trust God. He is with you and he wants to use you. But you need to let him use you and take these discouragements out of your head. God bless you. Amen, brother. That is good word. And uh, let me tell you, I rub shoulders and elbows with a lot of Christians who believe that... Uh, you know, America's Babylon, America's fallen, we're destroyed. My advice to you is go to another country. Go to another country and do what we do here. Let's see how long you last. When we were in Russia the last time, we were arrested almost every day. And it got to the point where the police got tired of arresting us and just said, you guys are CIA. You know, we're trying to shut you down and you go right back at it again. It's amazing. When we were arrested in Norway, they wanted to teach us a lesson. They put us in a small little box about the size of a of the old telephone booth. And, of course, the officers there would come by and mock us. Oh, you Americans, you think you're all just a bunch of John Wayne. You, you guys think you're just a bunch of gun-toting John Wayne. And I remember uh, we told the officer, uh, no, we're not like uh, you. Uh, you guys surrendered to Hitler with a marching band. He came into Norway and with a marching band and you gave up. You know, Norway, you're not like the old Vikings. You guys don't have it. Well, at that, he got pretty angry. And they put uh, myself and another brother, Larry, inside of a, a phone booth and kept us there. You know, they're going to make an issue out of you. They're going to do something. If you're not being hated, there's a reason why. If your gospel is just making people like you, there's a reason why. 
red letters in the Bible, Jesus Christ said, the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. Here's the reason why. Because I testify that the works thereof are evil. If you go out and start testifying that the world is evil, that sin, uh, they're going to hate you. That's what Jesus Christ said. They didn't put Jesus Christ on the cross because he went out and hugged and kissed everybody. They didn't put Jesus Christ on the cross because he washed everybody's feet and told them how wonderful they were. He told them about their sin. The world hates you. And it will hate you when you begin to testify of their sin. If you're not testifying of sin, what this young brother said is very foreign. You're not ever going to understand that. If you go out there just to hug and smile and pray and lay your hands on people, uh, you're not ever going to deal with hatred because you're not testifying that uh, their sin is evil. You go to a doctor, the doctor wants to tell you what the blood test is, what your x-rays are, what the problem is. He doesn't just say, take this medication. He's telling you what the problem is, which will give you an incentive to take the medication. And so you need to start showing the law before you show any grace when you're out there preaching. Now, brother, uh, 18 years old, uh, you know, street preaching. I'm sure the girls aren't flocking you. Are you a single guy? Uh, actually, I'm married. You're married yeah. at 18 years old. But what does your wife think about what you're doing? She loves it. She's wow. a Bible-loving, God-fearing wife. Praise God. Praise uh, you God. know, actually, I haven't had a... Uh, I was single, single. I didn't go out, out and go with girls, no party, you know, just preaching, serving God. And in the end, God blessed me big time. She gave my rib. And, you know, she, she like, this is not a, like I said, first of all, I searched for a wife. Secondly, it was the, the beauty was in, in the place to, now I get a wife and a beauty. I don't say no to that. I mean, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, Praise God. Uh, it, yeah, it's but, good, brother, to uh, after swinging the sword all day to come home and uh, and have a home, not a house. Yeah, and have exactly. a, a home where your wife has uh, turned it into something that's a little bit more peaceful. You know, the last thing you want to do is come home and start a uh, uh, swinging that sword at your wife and kids because there's <laughs> problems and issues. It's it's glamorous. My wife has always turned our house into a home. Doesn't matter what happened when I was preaching out there. As soon as I come home and shut the door, man, it uh, what a blessing that I was able to escape all that. Yeah, um, the same, the same, yeah. Amen, brother. Now, listen, uh, it's 7 o'clock here in L.A. What time is it uh, where you're at? 3. 3 in the morning. Now, do you want to hang in for a little bit more and see if anybody has any questions for you? No, you know, uh, actually... No problem. I mean, today after work, work. I was working today to maybe five. So then I slept to one o'clock. So no problem. Okay, brother. Let's, uh, Rich, join us and uh, let us know. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay. Really? Amazing. It's amazing. I, I learned so much about myself over the internet. It's just absolutely amazing. <laughs> why, why, why does the Bible call us saints, not sinners? Uh, if you have more in common with a sinner, uh, obviously I'm going to uh, uh, get you upset. Uh, I'm not you. I don't want to be you. I've never been you. And uh, thank God uh, I'm a saint, not a sinner. When God looks at me, I'm a saint, not a sinner. Okay. Um, so Kelly asked, did, uh, 
Does abortion exist in your country? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I actually got the most hate for like, being against abortion. Actually, you can think about it, but almost homos are actually, I think abortion is a step worse. Than what, yes. homos? Yeah. yeah. And, and the reason, yeah, you're, uh, you know, I mean, God, uh, God, when you murder an innocent baby, uh, God doesn't take that too kindly. No, no, no. Now, do the women out there have a lot of say in your country on abortion, brother? W woman, yeah, they can. Yeah, I mean, the, the abortions in our country, they're not even a specific place. It's a part of the health care. Like, it's in the hospitals. It's in the big hospitals. You have parts that it's only for abortions. It's like a normal thing. It's not like you need to go to a special place to make an abortion. No, everything is free. You don't pay a penny. All the taxpayers are paying for the murders. Disgusting, yeah. evil, disgusting. Like if, 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 if you know, here we pay 33% of our, uh, the money we earn goes to taxpayer. If this taxpayer go to murdering babies, disgusting is disgraceful. I can't, I can't believe that. So yeah, we have abortion and uh, it's totally free. We have other places where women can go and take some pills for free, I think. And yeah, it, it's so satanic, really, really bad. Really uh, bad. Brother, um, the 1st of November, November 1, <laughs> our Supreme Court is going to hear a case. December 1st. December 1, yeah. Uh, our, our Supreme Court is going to hear a case that might overturn abortion in this country. Oh. And so um, there should probably be about 25 of us out there in front of the Supreme Court with abortion signs and preaching against abortion. Uh, you know, every everybody that has anything to say about abortion in our country is going to be there. Yep. It's going to be massive. I'm sure maybe you'll hear about it. Uh, out in out in Sweden, and just know when you have things like that happening, uh, we're there. Uh, you know when when uh, you know anytime something big happens in America, there's banners outside. Even though the news doesn't give us any attention, uh, we're there preaching. So um, you know, keep an eye on your courts, and if they argue anything, uh, you definitely want to be out there and support uh, the good things. The Bible says we're salt. Not just light, we're salt. Amen. One of the functions of salt is to preserve. And we need to preserve the Word of God. And um, uh, we're looking forward to uh, doing this. We're going to be working with the local church that's going to put us up. And um, it'll be very cold out there at that time. D.C. in, um, in December, it gets pretty cold. But... Uh, that's another one that we have on the docket that we're going to be going to. So uh, keep us in prayer on that because we do believe abortion is murder. And many of those girls going into that abortion clinic are not the poor, innocent victim. The victim is the baby they're murdering. Not the doctor, not those outside the clinic, not those that work inside the clinic, not the poor mom. You know, she's the murderer just like the doctor. And anytime we go to an abortion clinic, that's what we do. We preach against it. So have you ever gone to outside of a hospital with an abortion sign and preached against it? Uh, I haven't go. No, I haven't done that because like then it, I, I was planning to actually, I, I was planning to go out and do that. But if I do that, it will be oof, like jail time one month <laughs> no, i'm not joking and i'm joking you know you need to understand something about this country they're they're not familiar with these kind of things they are atheists they love love sin and hate uh, the righteous uh, they love sin and hate the righteous things about the bible and god uh so it, this about the, the abortion it's really heated topic here say something against it oh terrible People on the streets are crying when I speak about abortion. How oh, can you speak and tell them? Crying. 
really, I mean, a, a girl came to my face, like holding me, hook, crying, weeping. I said, "Do you love scenes so much?" Did you give her? A, did you give her a hug? It's like a candy, and the mom gives the candy. Give me the candy. Amazing. Yeah. They again. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth because I testify that it's evil. Yeah. You start testifying that the world around us is evil, they're going to hate you. You don't do this because you want to be hated. When you do this and you testify that the world is evil, they will hate you. How do you respond to people that accuse you of preaching a works-based salvation? Me? Uh, yeah. How they respond to them? I yeah. mean, firstly, like I, I had this, actually a, a, a woman, I think, already texted me uh, in my in my people, you know, texting all, all around. I said, oh, you are, you are too religious. Oh, you, you preach religion, Dario. You, you don't preach the gospel. You, you don't, I, I say absolutely not. This is not, I mean, in, in a thing, like our work, my work for the Lord shall show Jesus. So when I'm saved, I represent Christ. I mean, I represent my Lord and Savior. This is not one, one save, all, always save thing, but this is my works on the streets are actually representing God and his righteousness. So when I go and preach to, to, to the people and they, they tell me you're doing works, I said, no. This is a command from Christ. This is a part of the gospel preaching. The, preaching the uh, a part of the gospel preach, preaching. This is not works. This is something all Christians are supposed to do. Not me. Not just me or Ruben Israel. Every Christian should do that. Why people think this is uh, uh, works we do? They think that. I my understanding. They think that the preaching is a. a outside the gospel yeah. then don't think that it is a command from god so the thing oh all all thing you do beyond the gospel you, this is works i mean then hold a second is jesus talking about pedophilia in a sense yes but he's not mentioning the words are you against pedophilia are you doing works then i mean it, it, you know it, it's silly arguments it's th those people are just speaking and talking because they they're too lazy they don't want to go out and preach so when when they see us preach, they're they we are like condemnation, you know. They they're self. They they start to expose their heart. Our preaching actually expose Christians to not just we, uh, people, worldly people. It expose Christians. Mm -hmm. If you don't preach and share Jesus, we have a big problem. That you need to take with God. Don't take it with me. Say I, I preach. I do works. You have a problem with God. If you're ashamed of God. I don't know what it is. But if you don't want to spread the gospel. You have a big problem. You know uh, Rich. Most of the verses these people that, that say that we're work salvation. Right. Uh, use. Uh, love to quote John 3.16. Yeah. Only, uh, half, yeah. And only half of that verse by the way for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and they stopped there that whosoever believeth now Rich I never went to Bible college but <laughs> is believing a condition for John 3 16 uh, it, it, I mean the word whoever is believing uh, sounds like a condition based upon for a specific group of people that's right so for you to say there's no conditions, you've lost your mind. Jesus said, repent and believe. That was the order of appearance. He didn't say believe and repent. Repent means, I guess you would have accused Jesus of being a conditional, <laughs> of having this condition of salvation. Let right. me explain something to you. James says, faith without works is dead. Okay. Every Christian should have works. With that said, works are not my salvation. Works are evidence of my faith in Jesus Christ. Works are not my salvation. That's right. But for you to assume no works, Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, red letters, it's been in the book for years, actually spoke to seven churches. 
the first thing he said to those churches, I know thy works. Works do matter. They're not salvation. But what but did he say after that? Are. That was the church of Sardis. What did he say after that? I know your works. I know your good deeds. But that wasn't all he said. He said, but I have this against you. That's right. Yeah. Even with the good works. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, last time I read the Bible, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, many shall say, Lord, Lord, and uh, call him Lord. But he's going to say, I never knew you. That's right. And then he goes on to say, you prophesied, you did these things, you did these works, but I still didn't know you. Right. Works are not going to save me. Works are evidence of my salvation. But to assume there's no condition to salvation, you're wrong. There every, is. Every verse in the Bible that says salvation is a condition. Every single right. one. you got to believe. Uh, you know, that's that's what the Bible says. Uh, you know, you got verses in the Bible of... Uh, of uh, God being extremely conditional on many things, yeah. even in the Old Testament. You know, if you do this, I'll bless you. Three or four verses. If you don't do this, I'll curse you several chapters. That's conditional. Yeah. If there's no repentance, uh, then uh, then uh, you're, you're preaching another gospel. Hate yep. to bust your bubble. Mm -hmm. Endurance, perseverance, obedience... These are all conditions. As a matter of fact, in Timothy, doesn't he say to watch your doctrine closely so that you and your hearers will be saved? Is that a work? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're not preaching the truth, is that is that a, is that workspace too? I mean, I don't know. He would have had problems <laughs> with them. Yeah. Um, uh, let me just say quickly. Actually, I told uh, yesterday when uh, we talked. Uh, have you heard this thing that? Oh, you you follow you follow Paul. I follow Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I, I've been hearing more of that lately than I have in the past. Um, but it's making its way over there now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was laughing first time. I was laughing so much. I was preaching. I was standing with standing with a banner. I was laughing. I haven't. I never heard that in my life. I was laughing. Oh, I was. Oh, what I was laughing. It was so funny. I said, "Are you, are you joking with me?" And then it comes to the argument: Are you telling me that God in the Old Testament is not the same that, like God in the New Testament? That's another topic, but that's yeah. also silly, you know. Yeah. Same God. Same God. Same God. It, it was like yesterday. We were at, not yesterday. Sorry, on Halloween we were preaching at that church, and hey, there was a guy. He. Uh, he threw a bunch of eggs at us. He hit Eric in the leg with a frozen egg. And I said, I hope that guy gets in a car accident and dies. I said it. I'm not going to pretend like I didn't say it. Uh, and, and man, let me tell you, some people went absolutely crazy on that. You know, the verse, of G hey, Jesus, we're not called on fire. And I said, and you know, and, and the guy that's with me says, he says, well, what about the verse when Peter went to chop off that guy's ear? I'm pretty sure he, he was trying to kill him. Not just chop his ear off. He probably wanted to kill him. Did Jesus say, don't do that? He said, put it away. Now, you know, it's one of those things where, and I don't know how you feel about this, Dario, but I, I, I have an argument that I'm kind of, I don't want to say argument, but uh, a philosophy, if you will, and Ruben, I don't know what you think about this. You know, the Bible says to love your enemies, but it doesn't say to love God's enemies. Is there a difference between the two? Are our enemies necessarily God's enemies? And vice versa? I mean, you know, I mean, they cross over, but does the Bible say anything about loving God's enemies? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that's like it's the same. Like uh, when I when I go to like to follow up, when I go to some churches, maybe and then say, "Oh, but we are all brothers and sisters." I said, "Wait, the true followers of Christ are my brothers and sisters." Jesus Christ, right. Jesus Christ said, uh, "Here's your mom. Here's your mom." He said, "No, no, no, my real mom, my real brothers." Are those who do the will of my father. Yeah. Not all Christians are my brothers and sisters. That's right. Only that's those right. who do the will of my father. So that's true. Not all enemies. I should not love all enemies. I, I don't like in a sense. No, I should expose and rebuke them because they're enemies of God Almighty. Right. So I can like. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, those that do. That's a condition. Why would people say God's not conditional? Uh, you know. 
Uh, and, and because we believe in that, that, we get accused of work salvation. There isn't any work, let me clarify this for the hundredth time, <laughs> that is going to save us. No work at all. One more okay. time. Say that again. I just uh, uh, No work is going to save us. <laughs> okay. But works do matter. Works are who I am in Christ. And so uh, uh, to say that there's no works or you want to accuse us of being work salvation, you would have said the same to Jesus. He preached repentance. Repent and believe. That's a work. He didn't say believe. He said repent. Well, and, you have to he and you have to hear Faith comes by hearing. So if you don't hear, you can't have faith. Is hearing a work too? Sure is. Or bowing or bowing your knees and crying to, to God. Is that a... Uh, Using your voice. Is that a work? I mean, how far do we really want to go with that? Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> just, it's just reflex. Maybe, uh, you know, this guy is uh, uh, has has issues with, uh, with uh, repentance. Uh, so, you know, maybe, maybe that's why he's trying to find a way out. So, Derry, I'll ask you a question since uh, there's not a whole lot come in here. You know, you're in Sweden. We're in America here. You're 18. You know, I'm 45, and Ruben is, well, how old Ruben is? Um, you know, and we have a lot of freedom in this country. I live in Tennessee, where we have a police force that will literally stop in the street and say, hey, can you pray with me? They will literally pray with us in front of the abortion clinic. When they call the cops, they'll say, hey, we got a constitution. We have this. We have, we, we have it pretty good. And yet we find that Christians still will not come out and do it because they want to be friends with the world. They want, you know, they want to be loving. So in, in a country like yours where, you know, just going out and maybe going in front of an abortion clinic and, and telling a woman, hey, you know, you're, you're murdering your baby, you're going to go to hell, could put you in jail. You know, what would you say to a, a, a Christian here that maybe 30, 35 years old that has never done anything with his faith, that his Christianity has never cost him anything? What would you say to somebody in America that has the freedom to go out and use that voice and doesn't do it. What I would say? What would you say? What would you say to these Christians in America that don't take advantage of the freedom that we have? Like, if if you take for an individual, if you don't want to do it, then change change place with me. I will do it. Oh, there you, <laughs> there you go. Wow. Hey, hey, you can move here. I can move there. There you I'm go. Fine with it. Yeah. I mean, no, but any liberals what, watching? What? I mean, sure they'll take you up on that. <laughs> like yeah, change. I want to change. Exchange. Yeah, but the thing is, always when people don't want to go go and preach, you have something behind it. I yeah. mean, that, that's. I mean, that's really easy to to tell when people say you preach works, you preach, you have your heart, you don't preach love, blah 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 blah. I'm, I'm guessing that they have a false wolf in uh, minister the church telling them this love 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 stuff not repentance not preaching the gospel and of course people are napping you know and and for a believer he want to believe in god he want to think that he followed jesus right but if you don't do the will of my father you don't know me if you know right. who the seeds me seeds the father if you don't know i am my father is pleased about me because i have done everything that I was supposed to do. Like even Jesus did follow all things that, that his father told him to do. All things. That, that That's why Jesus says, that's why my father never abandoned me because I fulfill, I'm fulfilling his, his, uh, his uh, will. I'm doing his will. So those Christians just need to ask themselves a question. What is, what is under beneath the surface that I know about but people can see mm -hmm. that it stopped me from preaching the gospel. Are you really, it says, love your, uh, a lonely your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul? Are you doing that? Yeah. Sure, it's not like a to me. Yeah, and then the second, love your neighbor like, as yourself. I mean, if you just think about it, in John 13, verse 34 to 35, I think, Jesus says, now I'll give you this command, love your neighbor, neighbor, as I loved you. That's really, really good if you think about it. How did Jesus love you? Did he say, oh, continue to sin? No, no, hell, hellfire. No, you will not go to hell. How did Jesus loves you? loves us? It says in the text, 
love them as I have loved you. He died first, he gave his life. He love love is not just love. I mean you need to prove that you love somebody. So are you loving to those Christians? Are you loving? I mean you are not loving. I'm loving. I'm warning people from hellfire. That's the most loving thing you can do on this earth. You are not loving, so you should you should only ask you the questions. Do I love God? Do I love my neighbor neighbor? Or I am or I, Am I doing the will of my Father in heaven? Amen. And Ask brother, Jesus people. said regarding love, Jesus said, those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. Right. That's love. Yeah. Not giving somebody a back rub, uh, rebuking <laughs> and chastening them. That is love. That's, uh, that's what Jesus Christ said. Red letters. Those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. So, um, you got a guy in here, he's apparently obsessed with the idea of baptism um water or holy ghost water and he okay. says he he's he believes in jesus but he says that unless uh, he is born again of water he's sinning times 110 and that he's not saved if he doesn't get baptized by water well i mean uh, that's uh I, he, he probably belongs to a particular denomination that teaches that. Pentecostal? Uh, the, the thief on the cross didn't get baptized and he was saved. Uh, you know, so there are people that living in the desert that they don't have the luxury of having a river. Uh, are we going to say that they're damned? Uh, you know, if, uh, if you feel that uh, obvious about it, go get baptized. Right. What's, what's the holdup? He wants you uh, to do Jane, it. It, James says, if you know that it, you're supposed to do it, go do it. He wants you to do it. Oh, he wants me to do it. Well, yes. join me in Phoenix this weekend and I'll do it. There you go. Uh, you know, what do you want me to do? Come to you and baptize you? Come to Phoenix. Go to the Sodomite Parade on Saturday. You can't miss <laughs> us. After the parade, hey, I'll take you to. In fact, we're staying at a house that has a pool. That's right. I'll, I'll dunk you in the water right there. You'll let so, him up, uh, though, right? What's that? You let him up, right? Yes, yes, okay. it, yeah. I'll pretty much, you know, depends on his theology. I can baptize for two minutes or one second. Doesn't matter. But uh, uh, you know, hey, talk is cheap. If you really sincerely believe this and you want me to do it, come to Phoenix this weekend. Join us this weekend. That's right. We'll we have. You're you. right. We have a pool. You can do it right That's there. Right. We got a pool. We can accommodate. But. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people assumed even the verse means birth yeah. because you were born in water and the water births and the water breaks and then you're born. So technically, the water is there. It's, I mean, it's the Holy Ghost that uh, that uh, maybe you're lacking. And that's what we have a tendency of doing. After we baptize somebody, we put our hands on them and fill them with yeah. the Holy Ghost. Now you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, not just baptism in water. So let me, uh, let me give this guy a verse too. In Acts chapter 10, Peter saw these Gentiles walking, speaking in tongues. And he said, he marveled at this. He said, even they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Who are we to deny them baptism? Are we going to say that these men were filled with the Holy Spirit before they were saved? I mean, are we really going to go that now and say, hey, you can, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost and not be saved? But these people were filled with the Holy Spirit. They're speaking in tongues prior to even being water baptized. So, you know, and, and Reuben, yeah. is it worth, if you believe that you cannot, you're not saved that you get baptized, is it worth spending 500 bucks for a plane ticket to go to Phoenix to assure your place in heaven? Hey, and then you want it by me, I'll do it. That's what I'm I saying. I don't have a problem. I, I'm not saying I, it's impossible. I mean, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. in December. I don't think you want to go in any water uh, in December in Washington, D.C. Phoenix is going to be about 85 degrees. So, uh, hey, why don't you uh, contact me? The me email's down there. Yeah. Uh, get, a, get a plane ticket, and um, uh, you can come and uh, join us preaching against the sodomites. And, He'll get baptized uh, in all we'll kinds of things. He'll get, we'll baptized baptize in all, He'll get baptized in all kinds of things that weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. What a, it, it's worth the ticket. So uh, yeah. what the, what city and state is he from? Uh, what city and state are you from? His name on here is Fisherman of Life. 
Um, I mean, you know what happened with me about the baptism? That, 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 that this is actually a funny thing. Uh, I can, uh, yeah, if you hear this, if you actually know something about the baptism, I got, you know, when I got saved, uh, every day, because that I, I had my summer vacation, I mean, every day, I went to, to the kitchen, Yeah. went on my knees every day. I just got saved. Have this in your mind. I went on my knees, worshiped God, and prayed every day. I'm not joking with you. And then I, I, I haven't come yet to Acts chapter 2, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes. I haven't come so far in the Bible. I haven't, I haven't even read the Bible. A single letter, I think. Maybe match, I'm not sure. And I was watching a pastor in, in on YouTube and he was explaining how important it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So then he said, pray for the Holy Spirit. I didn't like, I didn't know nothing about tongues. I'm not joking. I heard it once. I don't even know what it was about. And quickly video tongues. I didn't know nothing about baptism of the Holy Spirit. Nothing. Zero yeah. knowledge. I, I'm zero knowledge. I'm not joking. One day I'm in the kitchen on my knees, praying to God, filling with the Holy Spirit. Nobody's home. From no, nowhere, I start shouting in tongues. Nowhere. I haven't been baptized in water. From nowhere. And after a minute, I was just, what was this about? What? I was so in shock. What was this about? And then later on, I came to Acts chapter 3. Aha, this is, <laughs> now I understand the thing. So, I mean, I mean, Jesus says in John 3, 5 to get baptized in water and spirit. But as Ruben said, if you're in the desert, you don't have any lake or something. I mean, that's right. Hey Ruben, you, you got these uh, charismatics surrounding you now. What are you gonna? I mean, what are you gonna do with all that? You got, what you got, you, you, well, you got Dario speaking in tongues. I'm a, I speak in. You got these, you got charismatics coming coming your way now. Uh, <laughs> and let me make this very clear for you, charismatics. I'll explain it to you because obviously the Holy Ghost doesn't. <laughs> I believe in tongues. <laughs> I actually spoke in tongues, but tongues, according to Acts chapter two, is they heard it in their own language. It wasn't the angelic tongue. Make that very clear. I didn't know I was speaking in tongues. I said something and some guy came up to me. He was a Hindu. And he says, if you ever say that about my God, I'm going to do. I mean, this guy was really upset. And it took me probably about 10 minutes to realize after he left he heard what i said in his language yeah and that's acts chapter two tongues so i do believe in tongues but in the sense that it's it's set up so that they can understand when you go out and preach that's what happened in acts chapter two it wasn't the an angelic tongue there is an angelic tongue right and nobody's going to argue against that but acts chapter two if you're a pentecostal they heard it in their language yeah Yes, mm. it is another language. That's well. Yes, there's, but, uh, there's actually three kind of tongues. There's the speaking in an unknown language, like a language you wouldn't know, an earthly language. There's the hearing in a language, and this is what I get from scripture. And then there's the angelic tongue. So yeah. it's not just a hey, you know, the, the the one tongue, but you like you said, you speak and they hear it in your language. That's a form yeah. of tongues. Yeah. And, and and again, I wish I can tell you I saw the Holy Ghost descend on me when I said this. Here's what I did. This was during Mardi Gras and the streets filled with drunks. So I said, since you guys don't want to hear the word of God, I'm going to talk to you in your language. And then I said, rah, 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 rah. that's that's when the guy heard that I spoke against his God. It's amazing. It does happen. So to say I don't believe in tongues, nothing's. Oh, I, I was just messing around with you because yeah. you'd always call me a, you know, what'd you say? My house is like the Pentecostal Green Acres. <laughs> <laughs> but Dario, that happened to me too. I, when I got saved, I knew nothing about tongues. I knew nothing about baptism of the Holy Spirit, and it happened to me. And then afterward, just like you, I'm like, what was that? And then yeah, the pastor yeah, had yeah. told the guy, hey, take him out and explain to him what show him the Bible what that was. Uh, and Ruben, the guy. 
that wants you to baptize him says he's an ox, 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 ox nerd, ox nerd. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too far from Los Angeles. Maybe you want to wait until you get there. We get back and we'll go to the beach. We do most of our baptisms in public if we can. Nice. Okay? Baptism in the Bible was done publicly. Contact me via um, my email. In the description and, that your contact in was in the description of the video. Yes, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get you get you baptized uh, in the beach and uh, spend some time with you, fellowship, try to find you a good church and have you gone. Um, I would say maybe uh, about five years ago, I'm in Venice Beach preaching, okay? And this guy comes up to me and he says, 25 years ago, I heard you preach here in Venice Beach. He says, I, I'm an executive. I now live in New York and uh, I just came here for vacation and I'm walking the beach and I hear this voice and I know it was you. <laughs> and the guy says, uh, I'm leaving back to New York in about four days. Is it possible you baptize me? We rearranged our schedule. Yeah. And uh, we went out there and publicly baptized them. And uh, we were rejoicing. I don't have a problem. You're not far from me. I'm in uh, L.A. So you're maybe about, uh, you know, 40 minutes to an hour. That's what he if said, 40 traffic, minutes. It can be about three hours. But uh, let's uh, contact me. <laughs> we'll get together on a weekend and uh, and spend some time together. I don't have a problem with that. That's great. Glad to hear that. And to make it clear, I don't believe in baptism for salvation. I do believe if you're a Christian, you should get baptized. I think it's important for us to do that. I think we should do it. Uh, I don't want to take away and say, well, you don't have to do that. But, again, getting baptized in water is not uh, salvation pending. It's, you're not going to go to hell if you don't get water bapt if you die before you get baptized. Yeah, to put uh, baptism in some tangible words, this is my wedding ring. This doesn't mean I'm married. It's a token, a symbol of my marriage. Right. That's what your water baptism is. It's a symbol of your salvation. Yeah. There are people that don't have the luxury. You got Christians in China who actually have to meet inside of a cave. Yeah. They don't have the luxury to go get baptized. So you can't say it's salvation pending. When I walk around and I have this flashing, it lets everybody know that, hey, I am married. It's, it's a symbol of my marriage. It's not my marriage, but it's a symbol. Much right. like uh, baptism, so contact me via my uh, email, and um, we'll be, we'll go in the water. I don't have a problem. There you go, uh, Daria. What are your thoughts on Hillsong? <laughs> well, okay, that says it all right there. <laughs> don't don't name that. I'm mean, joking. How do you That's really? A joke. But, That's how do you, a joke. How, how do you really feel? He just I, laughed. Try to keep it to a PG-13 if you can, Mario. <laughs> no, uh, listen, when we were going to Phoenix, one of the churches that we were going to stand out in front of it was uh, was that church. We were going to stand out oh, in front of their church. They have well, a Phoenix uh, chapter out there. The problem is they're still a little bit nervous about the virus, so everything's done online. They can, they can sing wonderful songs. Aren't they charismatics? But, uh, uh, yes, they are. Yeah, they, I'm so, sure they are because they've got a lot of stuff. But uh, you know, when it comes to uh, to the virus, uh, you know, they're they're a little bit concerned. But we were going to go out there and visit Hillsong Phoenix. A uh, Jesus should laid we his should hands do it anyway. on a leper. He laid yeah. his hands on a leper. Amen. amen that was somebody amen. that was unclean. Yeah, he yeah, could, yeah. This, this leper, he wasn't even allowed to be near Jesus. Yeah. He they supposed to yell unclean when they see somebody coming and jesus put his hands on that man then jesus didn't say now go tell everybody on facebook what happened no he, he told the guy keep it to yourself just go tell the priest what to happen and uh, do what moses commands you <laughs> it wasn't something that he wanted uh you know uh to be seen with but you have jesus touching a person who was considered unclean. These people had their own colony. They were in I Gehenna. Mean, they were literally walking around that garbage pile when it wasn't on fire. 
They were walking around there looking for clothes and food that people discarded. Yeah, it's, and you know, uh, that's, that is a very odd uh, disease. I mean, your nose is coming apart. Your ears <laughs> are peeling, you know, and for Jesus, uh, you know, he didn't say, hang on a second, let me put a glove on before I touch <laughs> No, uh, he touched the guy and prayed for him. So for Hillsong to shut their service down, maybe next time. But we had them in our sights. We were going to be outside of their service. And most of them, they're just involved in music. Right. It's just pure emotion. Yep. You got the smoke. You got the flashing lights. You got the pounding beat. Yeah. Uh, it has nothing to do with worshiping God. No, That's my no. opinion. But brother, uh, Dario, yeah, can agree. you respond to that? I agree. I mean, it's like a party. It's like a party with Christian songs. Christian songs. Some of the text of the songs are so wrong. You know, you, you see how the enemy is working. It seems good. It seems nice. Nice lamps and flashes and good songs. But in those beautiful songs, you have something bad, you know, that's unbiblical. Yeah. It's really unbiblical. And about the diseases, imagine, imagine what a terrible missionary trip a Paul would have if he said, oh, I'm afraid of this, this <laughs> disease. Yes. Imagine how bad Where's, where's my trip. mask? Where's my mask? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Let me take the... <laughs> I'll go there, Lord, but uh, I need my shot. <laughs> I need my jab. I need a jab and a, and a mask. Hey. Oh, by the, by the way, Re Ruben, I was just told that David Lynn is going to be in Phoenix this weekend as well. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Rich. Uh, yeah. In our Bible... Uh -huh. We have this creature called Lucifer. Uh -huh. What was Lucifer's function in heaven? He was the covering cherub. Or I'm sorry, you were talking about the, the head. He mm. was a covering cherub, but he's also the head musician. Wow. <laughs> so just because they sing wonderful songs that soothe you doesn't mean that's Holy Ghost. That's right. Lucifer actually sang for God. It's in the Bible. So, uh, you know, don't think that uh, you're going to, um, you know, be won over just because the music is there. And that's what they're known for. And well, that's what churches are. Pastors are retired. Yeah. The, uh, the one guy in New York got in trouble for sleeping with, like, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. But, and that's what the churches are. It's an emotional, they don't know the difference between emotion and Holy Ghost. They're, they, 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 you know, they're getting this. And if you watch, Dario, when you enter, when you go to these churches, watch. When, when you see a pastor and they start doing like this stuff, you know, watch the congregation. They will literally start following along and copying his movements like a snake charm. I'm not even kidding. It, it's like it's like a snake charmer. They go up there, you know, they, 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 they're, they're yelling all of a sudden. They lower their voice down and cue the music. The guy walks up, starts playing that soft piano music. The pastor's voice goes low. <laughs> And all of a sudden, everybody starts, it's all emotional. It's all emotional manipulation. And they start swaying and copy. Wow, it just, it's, a, it's amazing. Just watch some time. One of these uh, pastors do it online. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's like a snake charmer. Yeah. And the pastor of the Hillsong, oh, that guy needs to read his Bible one more time. Maybe yeah. two, maybe yeah. three. And, and you know what, uh, brother? We can blame the pastors, which they do deserve it. Right. But you have a verse in the book of Jeremiah. Yeah. And Jeremiah says that they said, because my people want it so. And that's right. So yeah. these pastors are teaching this because those people want to hear this. If they don't yeah. teach it, they'll go elsewhere. Amen. It's a very interesting verse in the book of Jeremiah. Because my people want it so. Yep. So who's coming to uh, Phoenix, brother? Uh, David Lynn, he, uh, he's a Canadian guy. Uh, he was arrested when he stood against the homos out there. Um, you know, I don't think he's a harsh preacher, but he's, he's not a bad preacher from what I gather. I don't know him personally, but I know a lot of people have been saying, Hey, you know, uh, why don't you get David Lynn? I know you've been asked a couple of times. And, uh, so, you know, maybe we'll run into him this weekend if he's out there. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, you know, we'll probably bump into him. I'm sure we will. Well, you, 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 you can't really miss. You know, the yeah, and... we'll have a wall of banners. There's no question about that. <laughs> I know that. Gonna, I've, I've if there's the going to be a problem somewhere on the parade route, it's going to be right where we're at. No, that's why the police know this. 
So uh, it's not going to be a problem if we just pass out the literature. God bless you if that's what you want to do. But uh, you'll see crowds hanging around us uh, for the entire parade. In fact, the parade's going on in back of them. They're so upset with us, they're missing their entire parade. That's what's uh, shocking. I mean, the wonderful Vaseline float and KY jelly float <laughs> is going by them. And they're not even they're not even looking at that and waiting. They're they're so upset with us. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny. You're, you're stealing the show. <laughs> yes, praise God. Vaseline and KY. And don't forget the HIV testing centers that they got going out to these things now too. Oh, they do. They're there. <laughs> Dario, do you believe in the yin and yang? Where some good pe some people have some evil in them. And some evil people have some good in them. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean. Oh, so basically, what he was asking is, do you believe a Christian, a born again believer, has some evil yeah. in them? Like. Do you? You are Christian. Ruben's a Christian. I'm a Christian. Do you believe as Christians that we have evil residing inside of us? Some evil, no matter how good we are, that there's still an element of evil in us. I don't think so. No. Uh, I mean, wh why, why I said that, I mean, people, you know, when you see on Facebook, uh, uh, I mean, a text, I am not perfect. You, you know something happened there. Something, people are falling <laughs> short or something. You know, I absolutely don't think that we have, I mean, take me, for example, I know when I was, uh, and the Bible clearly said that, when I was, being born again and changing for my for my yeah old life i can really say i don't have any evil in me, in me right now i love yeah. god i don't think born again christians have something evil if you have something evil and you call yourself christians mm. then you need to think twice yeah I... and, and for the for the mere fact that this guy used yin and yang for an example something is wrong yeah. how can a person be filled filled with the holy ghost and have demons inside of them or darkness inside of them it, the it's Bible not says what what fellowship has light and darkness it's Listen, this there's no fellowship it's it's the flesh they're talking about that you got to remember you're dealing with people that believe that this right here this this substance the physical substance they believe is is evil that the material is evil somehow and that this material this flesh of yours has its own mind um that's that's literal Gnosticism. It's called dualism, literal Gnosticism. Um, so, I'm going to read something to you, and it's found. Uh, it's a familiar verse. If you're an open air preacher, you probably used it numerous times. It's Galatians chapter five, starting with verse nineteen. Now, the works of the flesh, this is where this guy gets all this. The works of the flesh are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. If it's your really your flesh, how does your flesh get involved in sedition and heresy? <laughs> it's just using that to tell you that you are not that's your flesh that's like blaming god that's like saying like e telling god you you put the, the the fruit there yeah uh you know you gave me this flesh uh if we were to take it literally how do you explain your flesh with sedition heresy and, and if you cut it off does it still have a mind of its own <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering i mean does it still so when jesus says if your right hand calls you to sin you literally believe hey hand you did this that's right <laughs> small brains small brains in the fingers small brains in the fingers there you go <laughs> some people will try to twist scriptures but uh, uh no your, your flesh isn't doing that i've heard that all my <laughs> all my christian life you got brains in the fingers yes yeah you so somebody just said, I am possessed, and I consider myself a Christian. I became possessed first, of course, so yes, it is possible. 
Uh, you, first of all, I doubt that you're possessed. <laughs> you're not possessed. <laughs> okay. If you were possessed, you'd be killing yourself. That's the concept. The guy that was in the tomb, he was cutting himself with stones. It's very, it's very common for Christians today to use the word possession. Right. Okay. There is a difference. A demon can be inside of you, but to say you're literally possessed, uh, that's a lie of the devil. Yeah. Uh, Jesus said in the book of Acts that he went about healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. So it goes to show you there's oppression yeah. and possession. They're not all the same. That's but right. if you really are possessed, you'd be you'd be ripping apart your arms and cutting yourself. Well, look at the that's, pigs. Yeah, the pigs. Uh, uh, that's yeah, the first yeah. suicide in the Bible ever. The pigs didn't even want those demons inside. Of them. <laughs> Speaking of pigs, <laughs> uh, if you guys haven't seen the video that Ruben and I did on pigs, you got to go check that out. Um, with Muhammad. Yes. <laughs> But the, the pigs didn't want him. You'd be killing yourself. You'd be cutting yourself up. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things for Christians, like you said, Ruben. Same thing, heretic and Pharisee. These are buzzwords that Christians use. They have no idea what they mean. Yeah. And plus, you know, I've been around the block a few times. It sounds good for a testimony. Right. There are people that drink a beer. And when they give their testimony, oh, I was an alcoholic. <laughs> Come on. You know, we don't have to stretch the story to make God look good. You don't need to be possessed with demons just to say how God delivered you. I mean, you know, just uh, just be normal, would you? Uh, okay, you did some bad things. There might be a demon. But to say you're possessed, uh, you know, that's a lie of the devil. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a lot. I mean, I, I've seen real possession. I've yes. seen it. And uh, all this question, oh, I have demons, I have this. No, I mean, are you joking with me? Come on. Are you a lion or are you a rabbit? Come on, stand up. You know, right. when, I, I mean, I mean, people, we Christians often, when, when the enemy comes against us, we want to hide and, and you know, scared and this, this, this. No, I mean, that's why you, that's why you should preach. You can attack back. <laughs> I've yeah. been exposed. Yeah. So if you don't want to be possessed, go and preach the gospel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. it, it, again, buzzwords. We, although Ruben, I forgot to tell you this, and Daryl, you would like this too. So remember, we told you we were at a Halloween preaching at that church. We met Michael the Archangel. This guy came up to us and said he was Michael in human form right now, and we didn't get his autograph. Wow. We met the Archangel Michael. Uh, again, I just read the Bible. I never wrote it. The Bible says Satan will come as an angel. What? Angel what, of what, light. What, what is this angel going to come as? An angel of light. Unaware. You're not even aware that he is human. For him to identify himself as an angel, that's a lie. Off the top, that's a lie. But I, you talk about possession. Like this guy, he came out, and I, I literally laughed in his face. And I, I'm like, you, you have smoked way too many bath salts, or snorting, whatever you do with that stuff. I'm like, you really believe you? He's like, I can, I can make your life miserable. I'm like, yeah, okay. And I laughed right in his face. Yeah. yeah. We went to uh, an event here in Los Angeles because there's a lot of uh, Spanish people out here, and um, <laughs> it was a Day of the Dead, big thing. Okay. Uh, I mean, these guys had booths, little stands where their loved one had died and they're still honoring him. Huh. He's trying to communicate with them. Whatever beer he drank, it was there. Smokes, uh, whatever he was involved in, he's there. <laughs> I mean, we stood right in front of this thing. And uh, these people believe they're trying to communicate to him. Uh, that's demonic. But to say those people are possessed with devils... Uh, I think you're going too far. I, I got to share this comment. Yes. <laughs> <He's getting sick. laughs> okay. He says he was possessed by a demon and the demon controlled his penis. <laughs> well, you definitely, wait, wait, know, you, you definitely no... know you didn't have legion. That's for sure. <laughs> 
He told me I was going to burn for months. That's oh, called, that's probably chlamydia. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> what? What? That's I, I don't new. know. And you know what? The sad part I mean, is, I mean, come on. In, in some circles of Christianity, <laughs> uh, Rich, what he says, man, they're going to lay their hands on him and pray for him. Are they going to go grab his crotch, Mick? Let me lay hands on that. I yeah, mean, that means, that cut means the hand on him. The Bible Every says cut the hand. in America had uh, had that uh, penis uh, demon. <laughs> I can't believe somebody said it. Or the Catholic Church in the Father, yes. Son, the Holy Spirit, holy water. <laughs> yes. I mean, how can a person say they're a Christian and have a demon? Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That's the Bible. Let me just yeah. explain. If you think a demon possessed your penis, is talking about burning, it's probably the girl you're with. I suggest going to the free clinic, getting some penicillin, and the burning will stop. Sounds logical. Yeah, to me too. Yeah. <laughs> Take an extra dose. American ladies. Christians, you got to love them. Yes, you do. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. What we're going to do, brother, because we're about the two-hour mark. You are at two hours uh, and two minutes. I'm just going to... Um, uh, brother... Uh, you know, people tell me don't do Facebook, don't do YouTube. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's a fantastic uh, medium to use because I would not have met you. Uh, how did you bump into our videos and what made you talk to me over the Internet and say, I got a problem. What do I do, brother? What, the, what do you recommend? Uh, how did you and I ever bump into each other? In fact, this is the first time we ever spoke. Yeah, yeah actually. I mean, uh, I have watched your videos for a great amount of time, so this is not the first time I've seen you. I mean, it's great talking to you, but this is not the first time for me. I mean, I've seen your videos a lot of times. But, uh, I mean, you, you know why I, I like your channel? I don't find any lucrative thing in it. That's why I like your channel. It's pure. It's holiness. It's repentance, those, and, and, and as a born again Christian that really, that loves God, and I love those things. I mean, we can see this in the world. We have so many false Christians and wolves and, like, oh, you know, wolf after wolf. And, and, and I thought to, to be like, have hope, but I get tired, you know. I mean, have you read the Bible? You know. You're shocked. I, I get shocked all over the time. And when you destroy the wicked thinking and, and expose the sin, I mean, I've seen your videos. Me and you, we preach like the same, believe me. Amen. So that's why I checked the channel and I was interested. Kept watching it, kept watching it. I was loving your guys going to different away events, abortion clinics, uh, pride parades, and amazing. So... Make sure and you subscribe then, then to I... his channel. <laughs> yes, and, I should. And, and I, I want to say this because I'm, I, we got a lot of critics out there who say that, you know, we just love the attention and that's why we put things on YouTube. Let me make something very clear. One percent, maybe one percent of what I do goes on YouTube. Yeah. I don't think exactly. that it's everything that I do. Yes. Just maybe one percent. And it yeah. shows... My motive isn't to be seen. My motive is exactly to meet and encourage brothers like this. Yeah. Much like his videos are going to encourage people. You have no idea what these videos are, brother. And, and let me tell you, your critics are going to accuse you so much of stuff. And uh, I say keep those videos going because, uh, you know, there is in the city I go into where some guy walks up and shakes my hand. Hey, I've seen you here. Or I saw this. It just shows you that yeah. what's out there. Uh, yeah. And praise God. It doesn't get give you a big head. I'm just thankful the Lord used me to minister to this individual. And, uh, you know, I praise God that you had a chance to watch that. We didn't have that growing up. You know, when I got saved, we didn't have uh, what you guys have today. And so uh, you've, got, uh, <clears throat> you've got that on your favor. Uh, you don't like what this guy says? How about this guy? It doesn't matter. As long as you're out there and preaching, 
for heaven's sake, just go out there. And and, uh, and just to throw this in there, Ruben, again, uh, and this, this actually occurred to me uh, a few minutes ago, uh, this is a young man who probably got saved watching you, you know, and all your harshness and your hate and your unloving whatever. Uh, this is another person that, you know, has been inspired by what you're doing and is in another country and is doing it and going out and preaching in another country based upon learning from watching you, uh, you know, here in America. So when the critics tell us all the time it doesn't work, it's no good, you know, there is so much fruit that and if you're watching Ruben's video live or whether you watch after the fact, you, you can't say you don't come on this channel and hear stories like this almost, I mean, the past couple of months, it's been like this almost every single time that we come on. Somebody's either repenting or somebody's coming on saying, hey, brother, you know, I saw you preaching here and I, I got fired up and it caused me to go out and preach now where I'm at. It happens all the time. And, and again, these videos, they're to edify, okay? Rich is in Tennessee. He and I are preaching in the streets of uh, Virginia three, three weeks ago. Yeah. And some guy comes up and he's like, hey, is Rich here? I watch his stuff. <laughs> he, yeah, he saw the banners. He heard the preaching. He had a figure. He was there. It just shows you yeah. the influence this has, which is why sometimes you might say, I think I'm going to shut my channel off. I think I'm not going to uh, uh, work on Facebook anymore. It is unique. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. Okay, I'm using that channel for a different motive. Right. I'm not looking up girls or old friends or getting involved in stuff. Uh, it is pure. To the pure, all things are pure. That's and right. this is why, you know, I, I read, uh, you know, where people say, brother, I got to get off Facebook. The Lord's leading me. Well, maybe if you spend eight hours a day uh, <laughs> on Facebook, I can understand why the Holy Ghost would tell you to get off it. But not all of us spend eight hours a day on Facebook. You mean talking to your ex-girlfriend when your wife gets mad, pepper spraying her in the face? That's right. That does happen. It's there. And then he, they come no, back on. Dario, Dario that, that really happened. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that really happened. What? No. Yeah. And it was somebody who criticized Ruben, too. What? But, I mean, uh, brother, I'm going to give you the last words, Dario. Well, there, there's, a a there's a couple of questions for Dario. Do you want to answer them real okay. quick? Yeah, let's go just, ahead. Just yeah. real quick. Um, one is, how do you feel about deliverance ministries? And two, can somebody lose their salvation? And that's for Dario. Uh, I don't know what the first first means. Deliverance, deliverance is like casting out devils. Casting out devils. Casting out devils, uh, uh, healing the sick, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Well, you want a short answer? I mean, I, I mean, the thing is, I don't believe that every single person, if they have a sickness, shall be healed. Right. I mean, why people got healed in the in the New Testament had a purpose. Right. I mean, if we read, I, I think it's in the Haggai, God spoke. First of all, we need to understand who God is. I mean, God said, I think it's in Haggai 6. He saved Israel so that he shall be glorified and uplifted and be high among the nations. That, that, that That's why, so that he could show, show his power. So I believe uh, healings appear. But I don't believe that every single person shall be healed if they don't be, get healed. I mean, it's not biblical that every right. single person shall be healed. It's not biblical. Right. And about casting devils, um, I've seen, as I said, I've seen possessions. I believe that uh, that can have, I mean, like, you know, in, with my walk, when, as I'm walking with the Lord, I've seen some things that I'm not sure about. I've seen it. Maybe everything is not biblical, but I've seen it. So I can't, so, I mean, like I've prayed over people that really have demon and screaming and shouting, and it's real. I mean, sat satanic tongues against me and everything. So that's the thing. And about uh, losing salvation, I believe a person can lose his salvation. I believe that, for example, why did David uh, 
in Psalm 51 said, don't take your Holy Spirit if, from your God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I think you can lose your salvation. What do you and think? Then, and then, Ruben, two questions for you. And I'm only going to do this because they're public. One, do you go to a church and do you preach? And two, um, again, it's public. So I'm just going to ask it. Hey, Ruben, how do you respond to Pastor Aiden's video of him saying you're going to hell for being a horror enabler? Uh what was the first one? Do I have a church? Yeah. Do you have a church you preach at? Uh, preach at? Uh, yeah. I I have a, a church um, that I that I'm a pastor of. So um, yes, I do. I have a, a small little church that we um, that we meet for fellowship. So we've had that for quite some time. Um, as far as going to a different church, um, <laughs> usually on Sundays I'm out preaching. Uh, right now, since the virus is pretty active, I don't really do much of that. But um, um, uh, yes, I do have a church. You should have a church. Somebody should always have a church and fellowship to go to. Yeah. In regards to Aiden, the guy's a screwball. <laughs> Anybody who knows him, they know the guy's a screwball. And so he's going to accuse people of all kinds of stuff. And if you don't fellowship with Aiden, you're going to hell too. So uh, I, you know, the guy, what happened was uh, the guy had so many issues with so many people that he was coming to SOPA and I asked him, are you going to get involved in people's lives that are offending you or that you say that they live in sin? And he says, yes, I'm going to use that time. I said, that's not the purpose for SOPA. Uh, so you're not coming to this SOPA. That was it. All of a sudden from that, now I'm accused of uh, being everything. Why didn't he <laughs> accuse me of all that stuff prior to that? It's amazing. The guy's a phone. And again, Here's a guy, you want to talk about speaking in tongues, <laughs> here's a guy that stole millions of dollars from people while speaking in tongues. It's amazing. And the guy has the, the uh, you know, the, the wherewithal to try to accuse people. Uh, within the Christian community, the open-air preachers, uh, he's not even on the radar. <laughs> and again, I didn't want to ask it because, you know, I know it's whatever, but... It, it wasn't one of those that got held review. It pop, it came up. So uh, yeah. um, that's all. But other than that, uh, it looks like it looks like that's pretty much it. I mean, all the questions are the same thing there. Deliverance ministry answered. Salvation. Um, the guy with the burning penis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it uh, looks like we're good. I just want to – I'm looking for a verse real quick. I mean, by the way, you know that, that the police took our banner? They, they steal our banner. Yeah, that's evidence, brother. That'll happen. I mean, we, we normally no. got a couple uh, inside of our um, inside of our car. I'm sure if you need some banners, we can we can uh, get some guys together to get some and ship them out to you. If you need some help with that, I mean, I know our, my ministry. You know, we uh, if we ask people, hey, to chip in and get get some banners out there for you, uh, uh, we we'll get them out to you if you need them. Just let me know. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's you, that's amazing. And then a track, same thing. You know, for Christmas, I don't know if you want to do it, Dario, but what he's looking, I'll ask you. So we got these Christmas tracks. I don't have one here. Um, where we take these things. And it's, you know, yeah, it says there's no Santa Claus. And on the back, it talks about, you know, Jesus. And in America, at least, I don't know if you can do it where you live. Um, we stick them in the toy boxes. So when the kids go home Christmas and they open their presents Christmas morning, this card is there. It says Santa Claus isn't real. That Christmas is about Jesus. I can send you some if you want. Uh, Dave yeah. Grisham is the one who prints them up. Um, I don't know if you, if you want to, if you want to do that out there, we have somebody in the Netherlands that's doing it. Um, but I'll be glad to send you some if you want. Wow. That was really clever. Really smart. That's David Grisham's idea. Not mine. Yeah. And David's, <laughs> uh, David does that quite a bit. Yeah. So I'm trying to find uh, where Jesus upgraded those cities. Oh, uh, You know, it's funny. You hear, you never, you hear the word revile. You hear the word rail, but you never hear the word upbraiding from Christians. It's Mark sixteen fourteen, I believe, uh, and I'll read King James because it's you. Um, Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat and at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Upbraided is the strongest form of rebuke in the English language. And uh, that's something that should be 
involved in our preaching. Uh, Not and brother, I, I do recommend that you continue. Uh, don't worry about offending people. Uh, it's going to happen in our Christian life. There isn't anything that's going on or yeah. any thought that's happening in your brain that didn't come across my yeah. mind when I was young and we were doing it as well. And so for those of you that uh, pray for us, please don't, don't forget to include uh, uh, this young man here. And uh, we'll try to get you some signs or banners out there. You already and, got people uh, on your channel. You got people. Huh? You already got people here that saying they're gonna. They want to help to get in banners and tracks. Already, yeah, we'll, already on here asking to do it. Yeah, either contact me or Rich, and um, and we'll we'll get you we'll get you some, brother. Because normally when they take it, they're gonna keep it for evidence, <laughs> you're not and it uh, you'll never get it back. Yeah, if yeah. they do that here, they'll do that with you. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, you know, this is why having a good Christian T-shirt works out because it's got the same thing. And so. Um, uh, well, hey, praise God. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed tonight, and uh, we ask that uh, you would pray for us. Again, we're going to be out at the Sodomite Parade in Phoenix uh, on this weekend. You can't miss us. Join us if you want to go. Fly in. Go to the parade route. You'll know it's us. There's no question about it. <laughs> God bless you, and uh, Lord willing, mostly you will see you next week. Okay. Lies are lies, God don't take no alibis Right is right, wrong is wrong Don't go walking where you don't belong To be undecided Is to be decided Against the Lord who wants your heart He heals the sick And the broken hearted A life forever in His love